Hello, I'm Pastor Isaac Hammond from Neely United Methodist Church at 1755 Thomas Deplin, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70802. And we're so happy to be in your presence today with the Word of God. And we thank God for this opportunity for we can grow in fellowship. And we hope this Word can help you in your life journey, even to eternity. Uh, we're praying for you in the midst of this pandemic. We're asking God to bless you and um, to bestow blessings upon you and your family and to cover you with the blood of Jesus to protect you from the things that's out in the world. And we're just thanking God for this season as we recover and we move into new territory in life and new territory in our surroundings. There is a word for us today that's coming out of the book of Haggai in the Old Testament. Haggai is just a, a book that contains two chapters, but to God be the glory, he was sent by God as a minor prophet. And when we say minor prophet, that's just because he doesn't have a book, book in the Bible, um, like Jeremiah and um, Ezekiel and Isaiah, but he has a small chapter, two chapters found in the Old Testament. But what he was saying was mighty indeed, because it came from the word of God. In the book of Haggai, it tells us to consider our ways. God says, do this prophet, tell the people uh, of Israel to consider their ways. And I come this morning just to um, lift up that same word from God because it's still relevant for us today. Consider your ways. As things are changing and we're trying to recover back to uh, normalcy in our nation, and our world, we're trying to get back. We've lost many loved ones. We've lost a lot. We had a change in our lives, a big difference. And God does everything for a reason. And we want to come out and get back um, in a better way with God. So I'm here today to say, just like Haggai, consider your ways when it comes to God. Um, God has a way of doing things. Um, in the Old Testament, we hear God tell Adam, you can have anything in this garden after he made Adam and um, formed him from the dust of the ground, but don't eat of this tree of good and evil because then things will change. But we all know Adam um, could not deny himself when he had a mate by the name of Eve. And the Bible says he did his own way and tried it his own way, and he fell out of line with God. God told him not to eat and do the certain things, but he did it what? anyway. He tried it his own way, and it failed. When you look at um, Abraham and Noah, Noah, um, God flooded the world because people didn't want to follow his way. They wanted their own way. And when Noah came and um, got out of the boat, he tried it his what? own way and did something that he should have done. And the Bible says what? Um, sin began to come back into the world again. When you look at all the patriarchs, um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, every time they tried it their own way and not the way of God, situations what became devastated. Um, at time after time in the book of Judges and Joshua and all those Old Testament books and even when David came along, every time David would try it his own way with Bathsheba, sin would come into the picture. Uh, when Abraham did it with Haggai and, and didn't wait on God for the promise of Isaac, every time man does it his own way, we get ourselves in trouble. And then we have to deal with the trouble that what we created. And God is saying, consider your ways when he gets to the point of Haggai. After all those years, he took them off into bondage in 587 BC. And now they're returning in 520 BC back from their bondage. Uh, they've been taken off and um, carried to a place that they didn't want to go. And we read the book of Daniel and uh, Amos, the fifth chapter, and um, um, all of Ezra, the fifth chapter. And it tells us when they came back, they still didn't do what God told them to do. God will take you to a point where he has to put you under subjection. He lets you go down the road that you want to journey, trying it your own way. But when he tells you to come on back, you need to get back into his word and let his word teach you how 
to be in a relationship with almighty sovereign God because he's given you everything you need but we keep getting ourselves in trouble and God told Haggai to tell the people when you come back from slavery after I destroyed your nation I'm gonna give you another chance but you need to get my house together in the scripture, he's talking about the temple, but today he's talking about the house that's inside of you. How is your relationship with God? Are you walking with him? Well, in the scripture, it tells us that we need to consider our ways, our ways that break us from God. God has a format and a way for all of us, and we have our own way that we want to follow. But until the two come together, how can we walk with God? Amos, the third chapter, third verse tells us we have to walk with God. How can two walk together unless they agree? Are you agreeing with God and walking with him? In hey guys, first chapter, it says in the first verse, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month of the sixth day of the month, came the word of the Lord Haggai to the prophet Zerubbabel, and the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jodash, the high priest, saying, Verse 2, Thus said the Lord of hosts, saying, This people, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord to Haggai, by Haggai, the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie in waste. Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your rays. So we see that Zerubbabel was the governor the political figure. Joshua was the high priest when they returned back from slavery. God had given them a chance to come back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple and become a nation again, the same one temple that Jesus Christ would preach from 500 years later. And they have been back now for 20 years and they begin to build their houses and um, they had sealed houses for the first time ever ceilings in their houses and um, major big houses to live in, but nobody had gone down to the temple, the place of worship, and begin to work and restore and rebuild a temple that had been destroyed 70 years before. It had been 20 years and nobody considered working on God's house. So God said, consider your ways. So many people um, do just like they, they did in verse number two. They say, it's not time yet. We still got time to go do God's house. Let us finish our house and then we'll tend to God. God is saying, how long are you going to make excuses before, before you come to me? How long will you try your own way before you even consider working on our relationship, spending time with me, learning about me, get into your Bible, how long? I saved you from sickness. I saved you from destruction. I protected you on the highway. I protected you in life, gave you a house, gave you a, a job, gave you a mind to tend to God's affair and a family. But yet you still say, I don't have time for God. How long shall God continue to bless you? before you make time for him. As we take this first break, I want you to come back and let us go into the first chapter of Haggai and see what happened to the people who had no time for God. After you watch the TV show, join us here at the church for fellowship. To God be the glory for all the things that God has done. As we look at the nation of Israel, how God told them through the prophet Haggai, consider your ways. God has a way format for all of us. 
that's found in the word. But we get ourselves in trouble when we forget about him and try to form life and live life in our own way. It had been 20 years since the children of Israel had come back to Jerusalem from being slaves. And now God is saying, you've forgotten about me. My house is in waste while your house has ceilings and um, beautiful trees and the streets are looking good and the houses are looking good, the neighborhood, everything has been restored. But nobody for 20 years has said, let's go back and build God's house. And every time they brought it up, they said, oh, we have time. We'll, get, we'll start next week. People are saying that today. Oh, I, I have time, but we don't know when life will end. That's why you need to work on your relationship with God right now. And don't wait and waste time like God told them. Oh, we always say, well, I got time to do that. I'm gonna come to God next week. I'm gonna go to church next Sunday. I'm gonna start, and then before long, Easter comes around and Mother's Day, and we still haven't set apart time to go in fellowship with God and tend to our relationship with Him. Tomorrow is not promised. And so He told the children of Israel, do the prophet hey God, you're wasting time. And in verse 5 out of the first chapter of Haggai, he says, Now therefore thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Then he tells them what's going to happen because they've forgotten about him. And they wonder what's going on in their lives. And so many things that happen in our life, we... Um, say oh, um, by it was by accident or it, we give the devil credit for doing it but I'm here today to tell you that the insurance company got it right when they say some things are just an act of God on your insurance policy some flooding some pandemics God is in control of everything and things are just an act of God and if you um, put him on the back burner and reject him and always consider him and saying oh I got time to learn his ways I got time to follow him I'm gonna try it my way right now look at the history in the Old Testament everyone that tried it their own way got themselves in trouble even the nation of Israel. So consider your ways. Verse six, he says, in Haggai first chapter, he says, because you have not come and built my temple and you concerned about your own lives and making um, your own family wealthy and forgotten about me, you have so much and you bring in little. So the first thing that God says that um, you've been working, you've been planning, but you're getting back little in return. And it's not by accident. It's because God is saying, until you remember me, you shall not what? Prosper. So, so many people want more anointing. So many people want more of this. So many people want more power in the kingdom of God. You want your prayers answered. But what about God? You've forgotten about him. Consider your ways. He says in verse six, you're so much but you're bringing in little into your house. And we all can equate with that. You eat, but you have not enough. You're never satisfied. You have to keep going back to the store to replenish. You never um, build up your garden. You never build up enough. It's always in what? In lack. When you find yourself like that, consider your ways because God is speaking. He says in that same verse, you drink, but you're not filled with drink. You're always thirsty. You're always thirsty, not only in the physical, but in the spirit, man, too. You're seeking something, but you cannot find it. And until you fill that void that's on the inside with Almighty God, you're going to always be seeking and feel like you're missing out something in life. You're always going to be on, on assignment to go somewhere. I always um, feel like you're missing out on something. You, you feel like you need to go this place and that place. You need a vacation. You need um, this in your life. You need all these things in your life. But until you give your life to God, you'll never be satisfied. And God is saying you, you're thirsty and you're drinking, but you never get filled. You eat, but you never feel from hunger. And you're so much, but you're bringing in little. Then it says, you clothe yourself, but there is none that's warm. So because the nation of Israel had forgotten about God for 20 years, 
and they've been back now and they always saying, well, we're worried about God next week. We'll, we'll work on that next year. We'll, we'll talk about him um, five years. We'll get a five-year plan. We'll work our way back to him. Uh, he says you, you close yourself, but you never warm. Our physical bodies are never satisfied because we're going to seek the things of what? The flesh, because we come from the ground and we cannot reject ourselves and where we come from. But the spirit man comes from God. That's why the spirit man has to be in, in control of what? Your life and your what? Mind and soul. Calling the Roman and body according to Romans 12 chapter verse 1 and 2. So the spirit man has to satisfy us because the fleshly man never will be satisfied. Then he says in verse 6, And he that earned wages, earned wages to put it in a bag that's with holes. So the more you gain until you get your life right with God and work on that relationship and let your soul prosper and everything else will fall in line. God is saying when you put your earnings in a bag, it's like putting it in a bag with holes. Uh, you build up this month and the ammunition goes out next month. You build up this month and um, you have an issue that comes along that you were unexpecting and it takes away what you what saved up. You think you got something saved in retirement and those things that you think are, are solid and will be there forever. Then some situation comes on and, and knocks that down, some sickness, and you have to spend all your money, a major part of your money on sicknesses and trying to re recover. Or that family member that may be in need. You got your earnings and it's like a hole in the bottom of your bag and God is saying, I'm doing it because you will not come to me. In verse 9, it says, you look for much, and lo, it come to little. You expect a whole lot in life, but it's coming back void. In verse 9, it says, and when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? So God is saying, I'm the one blowing on your life. They got you hungry, got you thirsty, got you working and never building up. And I got you with uh, um, holes in your pocket because I'm blowing on it. And it may look good on the outside, but it's nothing in the spirit because I'm blowing on everything that you're doing. And what you try to build up, I'm tearing it down. He asked a question in verse number nine. He says, why are you doing these things? Why live like that, said the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in wakes, and ye run every man into his own house. So they ran into their own house all the time instead of what? Coming to his house to worship him. And God asked the question to Hagar, why are you living like this? We're going to go into verse 8 and see how we can change and get back right with God. So let us take this first break, get your Bible and come back and let us fellowship. After you watch the TV show, join us here at the church for fellowship. To God be the glory. We're so glad to be back in fellowship. As we look in Haggai, first chapter of the Old Testament, where God says, consider your ways when it comes to your relationship with me. He had freed them and made a way for them, the children of Israel, to come back to Jerusalem after being carried off in bondage for close to 70 years. And now they are back in Jerusalem and nobody has taken the time to work on God's house create a place for the fellowship and praise and worship him. He had blessed them with nice houses. The Bible says sealed houses. And for the first time they were enslaved, 
Now they have come back home and have houses with ceilings on them and have everything that they need and desire. And God is asking the question, how long are you gonna live like this before you come back to me? And every time they would mention coming back and worshiping God, they would say, oh, we got time. We'll work on that next week. We'll work on that next year. Give a five-year plan. So many people are doing that same thing today. Uh, you say you have time to worship God. You, you get to church one day. You'll start reading your Bible one day. He healed you from a sickness five years ago. And you said, if you heal me, Lord, I will serve you. You hadn't showed up yet in front of him. He's still waiting. And because they did not treat their relationship with God, God says that you're going to get hungry and never get full. You're going to be thirsty and never get full of drink. You're going to try to save money, but your bag will have holes in it. You're going to try to clothe yourself and never get warm. It says you're going to bring in something and you think it's going to be a whole lot. You think it's going to be an increase. But God is saying, I'm blowing on everything in your house in verse number nine, and it shall not prosper the way you want it. And he asked the question in verse number nine, why will you do God like this and live a life that's not truly blessed by God? The symptoms were they have forgotten about God. The solution is found in verse number eight. God says, because of their sins in verse number three through seven of turning their back on him and not tending to their relationship. God says, what you need to do in verse eight, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, says the Lord. Isn't it amazing how God gives us chance after chance all he's saying now, I understand. It's been 20 years and you've forgotten about me. You're more concerned with your own life. You're trying it your own way. But I'm here today to tell you, go back to the mountain. What does it mean to go back to the mountain? All through the Bible, you see where uh, people would go up to the mountain to be in fellowship with God. When Jesus would go off to pray, he would many times go up into the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration. Um, Elijah would do it. All those prophets, the patriarchs of the Old Testament would go up into the mountain to fellowship with God. That's a meeting place with God. So the first thing you need to do Stop what you're doing. It's been 20 years since you told him you was coming. You need to get up to the mountain, a place where you can meet and fellowship with God. Separate yourself from the world and spend time with God. The second thing he told him to do was bring wood. The wood represented the altar. The wood represented the sacrifice. So bring yourself a, a living sacrifice like Romans 12 chapter tells us. And when you come, come with your own wood. The gift that God has given you for the kingdom of God. God doesn't have you with the ability to teach children just to do it in the circular world and at your school. You also have the ability to teach Sunday school a Bible study. God didn't just give you the ability to be a nurse or, or any, any a construction. Whatever you're doing in life and prospering from is a gift from God. And it also can be used in the kingdom. It may be other gifts that you may have. Whatever your calling is, bring it to God and bring that gift and build up the house and the temple of God also. That means we have to work on that relationship by bringing ourselves to be used by what? By him. And then the third thing he says, and build the house, work on it. Invest in your relationship with God, pray fast, tend to God's business. Read your word, grow in that relationship, spend time with what? God. And then God says in the last part of verse eight, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, says the Lord. So if you want to satisfy God and glorify him, come back to the mountain, spend time with him, bring the wood, the sacrifice of yourself and your time, and then build the house. Whatever God tells you to do, do it for the kingdom of God. It has been 20 years and they were blessed beyond compare.
but nobody said anything about returning to God and building his house. God has a way that's from the beginning of time. Ephesians 1, first chapter, third through the fifth verse tells, tells us where we are blessed be unto God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us in all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. So God has a way for all of us. We have to follow God's way. When we tried on our own, it was not predestined for your will to be done, but for God's will to be done in your life. So let God use you. In verse 10 of Haggai 1, Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought in the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil. So God is saying all these things, the devastation in life is coming from him because we put him out of this world. There may be somebody who may want to come back to God right now. And we're going to say a prayer by faith. And if you believe and believe that there is a being that's able to take care of you and send his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you, for your sins, I want you to say this prayer along with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my transgressions. I repent of my sins, the one I did knowing and unknowing. Have your way, Lord God. Wash me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Lord God, let me be part of the Holy Family. I believe he died on the cross for my sins, but early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Now he sits at the right hand of God, interceding on my behalf. Wash me, cleanse me, create in me a new heart, and renew a right spirit within me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're so happy. We love you. Uh, we have a back to school, school supply giveaway on July 1st, Ju July 31st, excuse me, July 31st from 2 to 4 at Neely United Methodist Church. Come get your school supplies for your children all ages. And we will have the COVID-19 vaccine available also for the nurses to give in the fellowship hall if you hadn't had time to get your vaccine yet. Come on out on July 31st from 2 to 4 at Neely United Methodist Church. We love you. Be blessed. And remember, keep a smile on your face for that smile may be helping somebody along the way. Be blessed.